Sunday of Advent. Our service today is the Liturgy of the Word, which begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. And if you don't have a prayer book, you can go to bcponline.org and click on the Holy Eucharist Rite 2, and that will bring you to the Liturgy of the Word. Our readings can be found this morning at lectionarypage.net. Again, our service this morning is the Liturgy of the Word, beginning on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thought to our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle this morning is Canticle 15, the Song of Mary, the Magnificat, which can be found on page 91 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us say Canticle 15 together. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. 
He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceits. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Or reading from the first chapter of John's Gospel beginning at the sixth verse. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophets? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Gardete Sunday. Gardete is the Latin word for rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. This verse from Paul's letter to the Philippians and echoed closely in the portion we hear today of his first letter to the Thessalonians is part of the introit for the day. Introit being a part of the entrance rite that can be used at celebrations of the Holy Eucharist. It is an introit beginning with rejoice. I found myself rejoicing three years ago on this Sunday. It was a Sunday like any other. After arriving at St. James, I went into my office to run through my sermon once more before our daily services, and then I made my way to the sacristy to prepare for our 8 a.m. liturgy. I ran into our altar guild chair, which I found a little unusual, as she usually attended the 10 a.m. service. We greeted each other, and she explained she woke early this day and decided to come to the early service. Great, I said. We made our way up the stairs, and as I turned toward the sacristy, I immediately noticed my vestment garment bag hanging on the vestment hook. I found this very strange. I'm the only one who uses this bag. I knew I hadn't taken it out recently, so I was puzzled. I asked Beth about it, and she shrugged, although it was sort of one of those shrugs coupled with a little smile saying, I don't know, maybe you should investigate. 
I walked in and she said, you should unzip the bag. I could feel my brow furl. I followed her advice and hanging inside was this gorgeous rose chasuble you see me in today. I had made mention a number of times how I would often tease my mother about buying this for me to go with the rose stole she had gifted me with a few years back. Beth told me, this is a gift to you from your St. James family. And I definitely turned more than one head as I entered the church for our service in this beautiful vestment. I said thank you to the parish that day, and I say thank you again. On this third Sunday of Advent, we light the rose candle on our Advent wreaths. The rose color is an offshoot of violet, primary color for this season. Like with Lent, Advent is one of the penitential seasons of the church year. It is the season of preparation and expectation as we await our Lord's coming, both his first and his second. The color rose is used on the Sundays halfway through each of these penitential seasons to remind us we are still in a penitential time, but to rejoice for Christmas and Easter are on the horizon. Christmas is now 12 days away. I have found myself longing for that sense of comfort Jesus' birth brings, and recently began wondering, yet at the same time hoping, that in these somber times that have so adversely affected each of us, the tragedy from pandemic, the extreme division within our country, perhaps division within our own circles of family and friends, whether his birth, his coming this year, will again be a time of comfort, a time of rejoicing. I had a feeling that the season of Advent, as well as the Christmas season this year, would have a much different feel to them. A few weeks ago, while walking around Stop and Shop, I came across some Advent calendars. These calendars that count down the days to Christmas beginning on December 1st. I loved Advent calendars growing up as they were an integral part to my family's tradition of preparing for Christmas. However, over the last several years, I fell away from this tradition. Something that day in Stop and Shop, I decided to remedy and bought a calendar. I thought once again, this tradition of opening different windows for the days of Advent would be one of the wonderful ways to help me mark the season and help me prepare my heart and mind for Christmas, as well as restore some normalcy to the pace of life. I have already opened windows revealing many of the traditional images of both winter and Christmas. An angel, a snowman, mistletoe, a shining star, a Christmas tree, and what I assume is a bluebird, although these images are all edible milk chocolate candies, so I'm not sure. I have found that these images have begun to instill within me the comfort these seasons bring. For they are images of happiness. Images that find a deeper meaning of happiness in Jesus' birth. This has helped me to know that even in these somber and unprecedented times, we can still rejoice we can all answer St. Paul's words today in 1 Thessalonians to rejoice always, no matter what these last weeks and months have brought us. Rejoice always. At times we could define these words spoken by Paul as joyous, and at other times it's difficult. We all, together, are trying to navigate a very different world than what we are used to. We are attempting to stay safe, hoping to stay healthy, 
praying for recovery if we fall ill and hoping and praying for the recovery of others as they fall ill. It seems every day we hear the numbers of those affected with the coronavirus rising, deaths from the virus rising. We hear about the possibilities of vaccines and we worry, will they work? Will they protect us? When will they be available? When will our lives return to normal? And if this pandemic was not enough, we have the division that has engulfed our nation for years now, continuing to rage. We hear Paul exclaim today, we hear him exclaim today, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. This is the will of God in Christ for us. And yet it seems worry and fear, distress and sadness have been our constant companions for close to a year now. Not the traditional de de definitions of rejoice, to be glad, cheerful, radiant, joyous, happy. I thought about the opening words of our passage from Paul today, and at first thought, well, Paul did not know what 2020 would have in store or what we would be facing during these years of the 21st century when he wrote his letter. I struggled with his words and read this portion of his letter several times. All of a sudden, his words jumped off the page for me. During one reading, I heard Paul's definition of rejoice, to give thanks, to give thanks, as he writes, in all circumstances. All circumstances. This would include in fear, distress, anxiety, sadness, even in pandemic and division. Paul must have had times like these we face today in mind for he implores us to rejoice in all circumstances. And there is cause, my friends, cause to rejoice today, to give thanks today in times of fear, distress, anxiety, worry, sadness, pandemic, division, even in times of despair. Jesus came into the world in a time, much like the time the renowned author Charles Dickens describes as the best of times and the worst of times. I think this would be true of any time the Son of God entered among us. The world that Jesus was born into, the world of Paul, had its own unique graces and challenges. And at the same time, that world had graces and challenges similar to those we face today. Graces such as community and fellowship and challenges such as disease. Look at, the pe look at all the people that Jesus healed, such as division. Look at the Samaritans and the Jews. Yet in all the different times throughout history, no matter when Jesus entered into the world, he came as God's anointed son, which means he came as the prophet Isaiah tells us to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, 
the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. Jesus entered this world for us to bring comfort, to bring hope, to save. It is this good news in which we give thanks. It is in this good news in which we rejoice. For Jesus' is coming happened, and his coming is about us, about you. December may not be a happy time for us. Christmas time may bring up memories of pain and sadness or bring pain and sadness to the surface. 2020, while adverse for us all, has been excruciating for some. Yet it is at times such as these as well as in the best of times, Paul exclaims for us to give thanks, to rejoice always, remembering through it all, we are loved by God. We sometimes read the words from Isaiah and hear and realize the vivid reality that we too have been anointed by Jesus as God anointed him to bring his good news out into the world. And while we sometimes hear that saying, it is better to give rather than to receive, in this case, giving and receiving is equal. For we must take time for ourselves to receive the gift of Jesus' coming to receive Jesus into our lives. And this can happen December 25th. This can happen today. This can happen any day of any year. The coming of the Lord has come. The coming of the Lord is coming. The coming of the Lord is for us. In this, my friends, let us rejoice. Let us rejoice always. To God be glory, majesty, honor, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Hymn number 56, verses 5 through 6. Hymn 56, verses 5 and 6.
your bulletins or to page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning are according to Form 2, found on page 385 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletins. Prayers of the people, Form 2. Your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For our presiding Bishop Michael and our bishops Alan and Gail. For this gathering, and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, <clears throat> and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others for the special needs and concerns of our congregations. We pray for those for whom our prayers have been asked of St. James, for Donna, Cheyenne, Mort, Sandy, Paul, Betty, Jeff, Chris, Marge, Denise, Betty, Bill, Kathy, Julie, Doug, Kimberly, Jimmy, Ed, Shirley, Rip, Jacob, Larry, Anna, Hugh, Barbara, Wayne, Victoria, Michael, Christopher, Steve, Wiesel, Bill, and Charlotte. You know, you know their needs, dear Lord. We pray for those for whom our prayers have been asked of all saints. For Monica's dad, Oscar's continuing recovery from successful cancer surgery. For Grove, recently diagnosed with cancer. Lynn and Lori, and all of our professors and teachers stressed as they juggle online and safe face-to-face -face teaching. And for all our students and their parents for our college students returning to their families, for us doing all our best at social distancing and mask wearing and limiting indoor gatherings as hard as this is as we strive to contain the spread of virus in our area. For Kristen and Barbara, Herb, Karen, Kevin, and Paula, 
Harry, Della, Anna, Leanne, Anne, Jubilee, Fanania's friend asking asylum in the US for our health workers, Melissa, Anne, Lillian's daughter, Sarah, Beth and Becky, and for our elders, Christine, Sally Eames, John D in county rehab, where they have other nursing homes and assisted living facilities facing rising numbers of COVID-19 cases. Lori's Aunt Laura and Betsy Knight. We pray for those, we pray for all those struggling with COVID-19. We pray for all healthcare workers, especially those in places where the COVID-19 virus is surging and overwhelming. We pray for more availability of COVID tests for our health workers. We give thanks for the successful development of COVID-19 vaccines and plans for distribution. We pray for the local health officials preparing to receive, store, and distribute the vaccines. We give thanks for our faith communities that we're able to come together and worship. We give thanks for all communities and our diocese. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life of mortal, through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor, using the form on page 360 of the prayer book. Saying together, Most merciful Father, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I invite you to greet one another with signs of peace. 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 Peace to everyone. John is muted. Somebody needs to unmute him. <laughs> He's talking. The host muted everybody. Okay. All right. There we go. <laughs> um, so there will be, um, I'll be sending out an announcement next week about our Christmas uh, Eve services and our Christmas Day services, as well as we will also be um, having a blue Christmas service next week on December, Monday, December 21st, and there will be a description um, about that service tomorrow. Everybody is invited to attend all of these services and um, we will, um, and we'll, and that's all I have to say. So <laughs> um, any other announcements? The church fair, the um, partridge in a fair tree is still going on today, tomorrow, and Tuesday. So if you, at the end of the bulletin, there were um, 
there was an, a link, website link, so you can sign on to that and see what, what's being offered and what's still available. And there's 65% off today at the Trinkets and Trinkets, no 65% off. 10% off crafts. <laughs> I'm thinking of something else. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> so 10% off, not 10%. 10%. 10 <laughs> off. Can I throw out a little kudos to the fair committee? This, I finally got on there, as you may have seen, and, and you know, did some shopping. But it's amazing. You guys have outdone yourselves. It's wonderful. So thank you. We're grateful. Let me give a big thanks to Wayne and Della, who um, really helped us get the website, um, the foundations of the website up and running and made it really without their help could not have um, taken off. And then Robin, who's really done yeoman's work and all the people who donated crafts. And so um, we can't thank you enough. Our service will continue with the Lord's Prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray in the words our Savior Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn this morning is hymn number 72, verses 1, 2, and 3.